Hello, today we're going to talk about partial discharge, to be more exact about corona as one of the aspects of partial discharge. In front of me I have a PD simulator from Altanoa. PD simulator is a device which, as the word says, simulates PD or partial discharges. So what we see today, we have uh, three types. We have a corona, we have surface and we have internal PD, so we can take a little bit closer look. And because the PD is dependent only on voltage, then we will also be able to change the voltage by rotating this knob. So what I'm going to do right now, I first, what I did already is I have connected the output of this uh, simulator which is high frequency PD signal and I have also connected the sync signal which is the 60 Hertz uh, 50 Hertz signal I've connected that to my um, acquisition unit in this case I'm using the acquisition unit from TechAmp called Aquila and you can also see here how it is connected so the red one goes to channel 1 channel 1 the yellow one, which is sync, goes to sync, and you can see here that this is a sync. Moving on, now we can see the software. So here we can see what the software looks like. So what we are going to do right now, I will be raising the voltage on the. I will be raising the voltage on our sensor sorry uh, just a second to put this in a good position I will be raising the voltage on the simulator in order to start getting corona right here and then I will also show you how to separate eventual noise from corona so let's start with the simulator in the simulator what I first need to do is turn on well it would be nice to turn on the light you can see here corona will be simulated here on this spike this would be uh, surface PD and this is internal PD so here we also have corona surface and internal and I'm going to turn on corona and of course since we have zero volts there will be no signal as we can see right now but as I will be increasing the signal will appear so let's see I expect the signal of Corona to come at around 1800 volts so let me first increase this to a value below that let's say 1600 and this would be more or less it now let's see if we have something here so the only thing I see here right now is noise actually if we take a look a little bit closer look we will see that there are some dots here but these dots do not represent corona we will see that later regardless to that I'm gonna say send to processing and here I have some points this is actually a noise coming from uh, well the surrounding probably and let's see now as I will be increasing the voltage how you we need to expect to see something right here so I'm not gonna reset so what are we gonna do I'm increasing and I see 1670 1700 and 1800 and slowly but surely you see this pulse number increasing you there was also one corona here but this is not enough to have a stable corona I need to increase a little bit more 1840 and now we see corona happening right here we can see that this is at 1845 46 so what are we going to do right now first of all this is corona and when I press send to processing send to processing will show us two clusters cluster one and cluster two now these two clusters actually represent two types of signals just a second to show you better they represent two types of signals so what i'm doing right now 
I am filtering this using what we call a TF map. So this is a classification map. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to choose this group, this cluster, and I'm going to see what will it represent here. So let me do it like this. So I'm going to do this. And then in the picture above, we see that this is now the noise which I saw before. It is not a corona. So I reset, I go back and then I see, okay, this is what we saw, that this is the noise which is very close to the x-axis. The next step is choosing this cluster which is also quite big and this is actually the corona signal. So this is how you can separate two types of signals which is very useful, useful especially if they have similar amplitudes and similar phase shifts then they can be easily overlapping and we don't want that to happen. So right now we also have this, let's call it the third cluster, which is, I suppose, a noise. The only way to find out is to see what that represents. And we can see that it probably represents either a noise or certain switching inside of the simulator, but let's not guess, let's do another thing. We can now increase can now increase the uh, voltage and by increasing the voltage what I expect is to get not only a negative corona but also a positive corona. The difference is that the negative corona which you can see here will happen sooner than the positive side because it's easier for this spike to emit electrons and this is then the negative corona than to let's say absorb electrons from the air. So this is absorbing electrons from the air to create a corona and this is uh, torpedoing or this is um, um, firing electrons in the air from the spike. So just to remember that this is what the corona simulator looks like. The negative is me shooting here, the positive is electrons coming from all over the place here. So moving on, what I'm going to do right now is increase the voltage. And as I'm increasing the voltage, watch closely, something will appear here. So I'm increasing, I'm at 1, 9, 2. The first thing you see is that the negative corona is spreading, which means that it starts now even before, then, uh, even before phase shift-wise, spreading. And at one point in time, I should start getting the positive side corona. Let's see. And as we can see, now I got it. So it, since it has a pretty high repetition rate, the counter goes quite quickly to 10,000. Still, I'll try and make, send it to processing before the reach counter reaches 10,000, let's say right now. And here right now, what I see is more or less just the corona because the other signals, the noise is actually there is too less of noise, not enough time to pick it up. There is a little bit of noise, as you can see here. So if I'm just to choose that, I will not see Corona, but just the points which happen due to certain noises. So just to repeat, this is now Corona, the positive and the negative side. On the positive and the negative side, uh, on the positive and the negative uh, half wave. and. We know that it's a corona because A, when I reduce the voltage and I don't have any more positive side corona, as right now, what I can say it's markedly asymmetric, so it happens only in one half cycle. It has a quite large repetition rate, which we saw when I increased the voltage. PD magnitudes uh, with almost no dispersion. So what we can see, everything happens here amplitude-wise. There is no signals here and no signals here. Everything is happening here. The same happened with the positive side corona. And another very, very important thing when defining a corona, it's always not stuck to the x-axis or let's say to the axis to the trigger level. So surface for example, PD would be stuck to a trigger level, but here we have a quant, we have some energy, some, well, some space between the trigger level, which is very close to X axis and the corona, which is happening. So this is how 
we can use um, TF map to filter and I hope today you learned what Corona looks like, uh, what does the PRPD phase result PD pattern, which is this, of Corona is, uh, how is it represented in the PRPD? And thank you very much for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.